Elhamdülillah. Elhamdülillahi lezî bi ni'amihi tatummu s-sâlihât. Elhamdülillahi lezî qaddara kulla ma huwa âtin ve kulla ma huwa fât. Nes'eluhu azze ve celle mucibâti rahmetih. Nes'eluhu l-fawza bil cennet ve necâta minel nâr. I bear witness there is no deity save Allah and that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger and his mercy to all mankind. We pray to him to shower his mercy and his blessings upon all the prophets and upon Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon all of them. Dear brothers and sisters, my khutbah today insha'Allah will be about the power of prayers. Uh, lately, in our country and throughout the West, we hear a lot about meditation. And the uh, purpose of meditation is, is to help individual self-improvement and to help the individual to detach from the mundane world and so on. And while the meditation has its own space, I believe that monotheism especially, Islam specifically, which is the focus of my khutbah today, offers the prayers that has that ability. In, in my opinion, it has the ability to detach, but also it offers a lot more to it, and you'll, you'll hear in my khutbah today. If we are to look from the dawn of time, you know, from whatever the record available to us, a human being, you will find, I think, five plus 5,000 years ago and so on, you will find the prayers has always existed with the human being. Whatever form. And the reason is obvious. Life throws at us challenges, difficulties, problems, the journey of life. Nobody is immune. And there are so many uncertainties. So any human being, whether you are a king or you are a, 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 a regular laborer, a peasant, whatever at that time, they needed another power, something above their power, to help them to change the conditions. So that's why, you know, from the dawn of time, a human being needed to pray. And the prayers varied. People prayed for the sun, people prayed for the moon, people prayed for the stars, people prayed for their own divinity. But this was on their mind. I needed to connect someone bigger and more powerful than I am so can assist and can support and, and provide the desired needs. So when we look at Islam, you'll find the Quran it does something interesting. It really shows that this institution, this prayer, it is something from the old of age. You will find talking about Ibrahim when he left his wife and his son in the Mecca area. And you will find in the dua, لِيُقِيمُ salata. The first thing he mentioned. So they will be, they will uphold the prayers. You're talking about Moses. When the first encounter إِنَّنِي أَنَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدْنِي وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي I am the only Lord, the only God that you ought to worship. And what does he tell him? Uphold the prayers so to be mindful of me. And Jesus pretty much is the same thing when he said وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ And he had admonished me to pray. The Prophet ﷺ arrived with this institution that had existed in the human conscience even before you know I mean generally speaking outside monotheism 
And here Islam comes now to address and to reform this very important institution and to add to it, to improve it and to add to it. So the Arabs at that time, they used to go to Mecca and one of the, the way to, for their salat is to plod and to whistle. It's funny because it's as if like they need the attention of their gods, you know, whatever stone, whatever idol they worshipped. But this is how they used to pray. So of course Islam comes. I'm not going to go into the details. You know, we all know the details about the prayers. However, what is very important, when the Prophet came and Islam came, it, it looked at this institution, looked at this act of worship, and did a few things to it. The first thing, organized it. We all know what that means, right? I can't pray at any time. There are certain time I pray. And then there is, it, it was very well organized. You pray jama'a, you pray alone, you travel, all these things, part of the organization. But what Islam also added, it added the being. In other words, is when you pray, you have to be you have to exist in the prayers. You have to be mindful. Your thoughts and your will have to be present in the prayer. And that's why the Prophet said, for example, if anything that distracts you, finish it and then pray. You are fasting and there's a food on the table. The Prophet said, go eat and then go and pray. Because you can't be in the prayers. You have to be present. And you can't be present if your mind is elsewhere. So he said, go ahead, eat and then come. In other words, is put things on the side. Remove any distraction, whatever it might be. Attend to it first. You have to make a phone call, make it. You got a page, you, uh, you, you got a, uh, uh, a text, look at the text before you pray. Then pray. Mindful, present. The second thing also, of course, Islam brought a lot of stuff, but I'm focusing on the one that I felt I want to share with you today. The second thing is be aware of what you're saying. Be mindful. You have to be present in the moment, but also be mindful of what you're doing, what you're saying. One guy was praying in the mosque and the prophet saw him and the man went in probably within a minute. He was done. The Prophet said, you know, you did not pray. Go back and pray. So what, what do you mean? I did all the arkan, you know, all the things. He said, no, you did not pray. Go back and pray. In other words, slow it down. Take your time. Understand what you're saying. So these are some of the things that Islam added to the organization that was instrumental and important when it comes to the prayers. Now, also, you'll find when you, I mean, there's about almost 100 verses in the Quran talking about prayers. So this institution is very rich. And when you look at the, the, the our book, the Quran, this divine revelation, you will find, what do I pray for? I pray for self-improvement. I want to improve my, uh, my, my health. I want to improve my uh, emotional status, my psychological state of mind. I want to improve my spirituality. I want to improve my financial fine the Quran says this is something that yes you can pray for I want to uh, pray for the family yes you can pray for the family I want uh, there is a, there's this situation difficult I want to pray for it that's fine you pray for it in addition to all these things you will find the most important which I will elaborate later on but is I believe the essence when you pray is to be closer to God. When we look at the first chapter, Surah Al-Alaq, what is the last verse? Kalla la wasjud waqtarib. The first chapter. Here the Quran is saying is that don't be distracted by the whims and the desire and all those things and, and but pray and get closer to God and you know if I if I am to stop for a moment and think you love someone your mom your dad but really truly love it's not always you go to them because you want something from them because to them because you want because you love them so much you want to be in their presence you want to be close to them you want to make sure that you know they're happy with you right I mean when you love someone 
So Allah is saying here is, yes, the prayers can be used for all these array of things that is reality of life, but don't forget the, the, the essence of it is to be closer to God Almighty to, because out of love. Because say if you love God, so it is that relationship of love that we should always seek and then when we are praying and we're trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, this is, in my opinion, this is more uh, on, the, on the philosophical aspect of the prayers. Now let me go into now the, as, you know, the, 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 the real the, the prayers. And I like to simplify things. Uh, probably you've heard me before. I believe every act of worship consists of three things. No exception. Mechanical aspect, the goals, and the essence. So three things. Mechanical aspect. Second thing is the goal. You are this institution, what are the goals with an S? And last but not least, the essence. So the mechanical aspect, brothers and sisters, I won't spend too much time on it. It is what are the things that we have to do, right? We have to do the wudu, the ablution. We have to uh, stand, we have to bow, we have to do the sujood. Uh, we have to pray at a certain time. All the things that you and I know the sequel, the timing, uh, you know, what to recite. This is not up to us. It's not, we don't, we don't pray uh, the way we like it. No. S the prophet said, pray the way you saw me pray. So the mechanical aspect, it is important. And it is set and it is very clear. And, you know, anybody who is interested, you can always go to the website, get a book, and go through the details. This is, I call it the mechanical aspect. Let's go into the goals. I'll spend a little bit more time on that. Now, when we pray, brothers and sisters, you know, we, we, aside from the mechanicals, we should be aware what are we trying to accomplish? What are the goals? Whatever we do in life, we want to know what are the goals? Why am I doing this? So the first thing is, brothers and sisters, you know, the, 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 the simplest one is when we do the wudu, there's a purpose for it. When I go to the prayer and I'm, I did my wudu, I come to the prayer, in other words, is Islam wants us to be always clean. That's why you will find if you ate onion or you smell, uh, you know, not for sweat or whatever, don't go to the jama'ah, don't pray with the jama'ah, don't, you know, and even the prophet was so keen because he was in presence of the angels. So be clean and to the point where we'll find that the culture, iman, not to show this is a hadith, but definitely it is in the heart of our culture that you are to be clean. So. Cleanliness is in the heart. It is one of the goals is when we come to pray. The second thing, brothers and sisters, is discipline. Now, can, we, can I pray if the fajr is at a certain time and it finishes the sun at a certain time, I have to pray within that time, right? The dhuhr is the same thing. The asr is the same thing. And the maghrib and so on. So I have to be disciplined on the time to perform my prayer. In other words, is the bottom line is I have to uh, uh, prayers help me to be disciplined, and there's nothing, there's no way we can succeed in life unless we're disciplined. It doesn't matter what is your role, what's your position, you have to be disciplined. So one of the goals of the prayers is to teach us and to help us to be disciplined. Another important aspect of the goal, which is really we shouldn't lose sight of it, is equality. Throughout the day and throughout the week and throughout life, people tend to make us feel that we are better or we're different. The satanic whispers, I got a raise, I got a higher position, my status went up, and then I start acting in a certain way. You know, you become a little bit, you know, I'm not going to say, uh, but arrogant, but you start, you know, slowly. And this is, unfortunately, it happens throughout the day. You're, you know, you're here, here, and there, and so on. The prayer comes to remind us that all of us, we pray before God equally. Anybody can lead the prayer. Man and woman doesn't matter. When you come and the word told you otherwise, when you are in the prayers, you are remembering 
When you say Allahu Akbar, you are before the greatest and you're realizing that all of us are equal. That satanic whisper, whatever has been thrown at you, should be brought back and should be grounded and you realize that we are to, we are to be humble because we are equal. Another important aspect, brothers and sisters, which is something that we have five stops a day. Right? In that process, when you are about to come and meet someone important, someone you care for, someone that you love, you want to be at your best condition. You want to be at the best attitude. You want to be at the best behavior. Or at least you try. So, and this is why what the Quran tells us, that prayers will restrain us from shameful and from unjust deeds. And this is one way I think we all should measure ourselves is when we come to pray and we look back to from the Fajr to the Dhuhr, have I done anything that is really not pleasing the one that I am about to pray before? Because Allah is telling us the prayer, one of its goal is to restrain, <coughs> to refrain. How do I do this? By these are five steps. And then I look back and evaluate. And I want to be in a better uh, position when I, when I meet with God Almighty. As you can tell, brothers and sisters, believe you and me, I, there are so many more goals that I would love to have. So I'm going to skip. I'm going to go to now. So this is some of the goals. And as I said, I can assure you, and I, I, as a matter of fact, I invite you to go to your own list of goals, and I'm sure you'll have a lot more than what I shared with you today. These are the goals. I want to go to the essence now. Everything has an essence, brothers and sisters. So when we are looking at the prayers, what is the essence of the prayer? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I, I mentioned two verses, I'm going to go back to them quickly. When Allah talked to Moses, he told him, uh, Be mindful of me. This is number one. <coughs> number two is, وَسْجُدْ وَقْتَرِبْ That you do the prostration and you come closer to God. The essence of the prayer is to find yourself in the presence of God Almighty. The mechanics are important. The goals are important. But the essence of the matter is to find yourself is that you are closer to God. And brothers and sisters, the key in my opinion that I see the Quran is in this verse. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And the Quran talks about الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ In my opinion, when they put in the, in the when you read the translation, they said خَاشِعُ means you are humble. I, I personally believe it is much deeper than that. Al-Khushu'a, brothers and sisters, is when you find yourself in the presence of the Creator, His Majesty of the world. The one who has created me, who is in control of the space, of the time, of my destiny, of everything. Like... When you come and you are in presence of the mayor, it's not the same as your presence of a buddy of yours. And when you're in presence of the governor of the state, it's not the same. When you're in presence of the president of the United States, it's not the same. So when you are in presence of someone that you value greatly, you look at him or at her with such greatness, your presence is not the same. So al khushur is when you are in that institution in that act of worship and you are g getting closer to God in other words is this is the opportunity to detach ourselves from the mundane world from the from all the things that can occupy our thoughts and to feel in the presence of the God Almighty his majesty in other words is you are transcending above this world and you find yourself before the, 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 the super being the one that who has created the, the sublime in his power, the omniscient God Almighty. That, brothers and sisters, we should, we should reach that level in our prayers. This is what's called al-khushu'ah. Al-khushu'ah is when you realize who you are standing before, 
when you realize that greatness of that moment, that moment becomes the khushu' that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. And that, brother and sister, is the essence of the prayers. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi alladhi kataba ala nafsi al-rahmah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa habibina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Dear brothers and sisters, in my first khutbah I hope I made the case that while the mechanics are important, the goals are important, the essence should not be, should, sh shouldn't escape us. And the key to reaching that level of closeness to God Almighty is through the khushu'ah. And the khushu'ah is when in those, in that period that we have took ourselves out of this life that we live in and transcend above this world and be in present, realize who we are in present before, God Almighty. That moment shouldn't uh, escape us, but that, brother and sisters, is when you feel the closestness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you feel that closestness, as the Quran tells us, when, and when my servant asks you about me, tell them, uh, didn't even tell them to tell them. Usually when the Quran always say that, you know, the Prophet asks, قُلْ قُلْ Right? Means say. Except when it comes to this one here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He removed the word قُلْ There's no قُلْ Why? There's nobody in between. He, not even the Prophet. He was sidelined and said, إِنِّي قريب. I am close. So in our prayers, this is the opportunity to get closer to God. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those one who are close to me, I am close to them, I will respond to them. I will respond to their needs. But we, it escapes us. Sometimes we start with the dua and we start, of course, there are too many things on our mind. And then we realize that first, feel his presence. Find that moment of khushu'ah. Be before God Almighty. And when you feel the closestness, then you can open your action item list and do the dua and do whatever you want. But I think a lot of times we are so eager, we start with our dua first and we, 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 we skip that khushu'ah. I am hoping that I remind myself and you, let's attain to that khushu'ah, be mindful, realize who we are before, following what we talked about. So this way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond and will help us to improve and help us to succeed in this life as well as in the hereafter. Let's pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts, to purify our minds, to help us to pray the way it pleases Him. We pray to Allah that the prayers will help us to ascend above our mundane world. We pray to Allah to help us reach a level where we are in His presence. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to be among the khashi'een, among, among those one who are seeking his love and seeking for him to be pleased with us.